Zone.com. This is John again. Um, today I'm going to be doing an introduction to EDH and, Com and Commander. Um, not a uh, deck tech for you guys, but this is a really interesting and I think people who are uh, interested in getting into this format uh, really should have a good introductory video of uh, what this format is about. So today let's get down to it real quick. Um, so EDH, Commander, whatever you want to call it, is a dynamic multiplayer format and it is designed, or it was designed for a social interaction, okay? So drink a beer, sit down, have fun with your friends for a night of magic. It's, it's a really good format for social interaction. However, um, I play competitively, and I know a lot of you guys do as well. Um, so basically, this is a brutally competitive format uh, that is combo-driven, okay? So if you like uh, this play style where you actually get to sit down with four or five of your friends, have a nice time, and just destroy them with some kind of infinite combo, that's what EDH is. It's good. You should play it. All right. Deck construction. So this is a 100-card singleton format, meaning you have 99 cards in the main main deck plus one general, uh, which is 100 cards. The general must be a legendary creature of magic, okay? It doesn't matter what the creature is. There are a couple on the ban list, and we'll get to that later, but almost any legendary creature will do, all right? Um, so this is a 99-card main board plus one general, and a 10-card sideboard. Don't forget about the sideboard, okay? Um, because this is a multiplayer format in a competitive league or, or whatever it is, you can look into your sideboard, your 10 cards, after viewing the other generals of your opponents, and you can then make decisions on what you want to side in and what you want to keep in your main deck, okay? So make sure you have a 10-card sideboard with your deck. All right, uh, more on deck construction. Uh, the decks are constructed around the general's colors, okay? So here are some, um, just some generals for you guys to look at real quick. So you can have generals that are monocolored, uh, multicolored, right? And you can have three colors, whatever you want. You can have three, you can have four, you can have five, okay? So there are a lot of choices um, for EDH generals in the format. There are hundreds, I guess, and you can choose whatever you like, um, whatever place that you like. I have a ton of videos online. So check out some deck techs of uh, the videos that I've made. They're always coming um, more and more each week or every other week we have more coming out. Um, so take a look at that. But um, so you basically you build around a general and you build around the colors of the general, okay? And what I mean by that, let's take a look at another general here. We have um, a general like Riku of Two Reflections, okay? He's a rug general, so he's blue, red, and green. And every single card that is in your deck must be in the general's colors, either blue, red, or green. So, for example, let's take a look at this. Uh, we have a card like Noble Hierarch. Noble Hierarch has a mana cost of one green. However, um, in its rules text, it has uh, a white mana symbol. Okay, Because it has a white mana symbol, it cannot be in your Riku deck. All right, Because Riku is only green, blue, and red, and Noble Hierarch has a white mana symbol, therefore cannot go in. Okay, So make sure you remember that. Uh, it must be the colors of your general. If it has a mana symbol that is not of your general, it cannot be in it, okay? Which is why the fetch lands can be in any deck because they say mountain and swamp and forest and plains and island and they don't actually have a mana symbol, all right? So that's that. Um, as well, one more thing, if you are looking to pick a colorless general um, like Memnarch or Bosch Iron Golem, remember that Memnarch has a blue mana symbol in his rules text and Bosch Iron Golem has a red mana symbol. So therefore, a Memnarch deck will be a mono blue deck, and a Bosch Iron Go Golem will be a mono red deck, okay? So that's really important to remember. All right, let's get down to some rules here, some game rules. Um, so basically, we have a commander, and he sits in the command zone, okay? This is important because the command zone is an area that is outside the game, all right? But it functions as though it were your hand, okay? But it is not. So it functions as though it were your hand, however, it is not. Now, why is this important? Well... We have generals, or possible generals, like Myojin of Knight's Reach, um, and he is a legendary creature from uh, Kamigawa Block, and Myojin says, uh, Myojin of Knight's Reach comes into play with a divinity counter on it if you played it from your hand, okay? So uh, why this is important is that the command zone is not your hand, although it acts like it is your hand, okay? So if you cast the Myojin from the command zone, you will not get the divinity counter, all right? So remember that. It's really important. Do not make Myojin your general unless you don't want that Divinity Counter. All right. So how does this work? Um, we have a command zone, right, where the general is cast. And let's say you cast the general. He comes into play. He is out. He's swinging. He's doing stuff. He's having fun, whatever. 
and then someone decides to cast a board wipe, and he gets killed. Now, at this moment in time, when your general is destroyed or buried, you have the choice to either allow him to set in the graveyard, or you can move him back to the command zone. All right. If you decide to move him back to the command zone, he will get one counter on him, and that goes with him back into the command zone. Now, what that means is, the next time that you cast uh, your general from the command zone, you must pay an extra two colorless mana for each counter on your general. So, uh, his Krenko's original cost is four, right? He's got one token, you have to pay six now. His normal casting cost plus two colorless mana. So you pay his casting cost, he comes back into play, right? He's destroyed again, he goes back, now he's got two. So now you have to play, pay his original cost plus four mana, okay? Now, how about this? Let's say you're playing with a different general. Let me find uh, one that likes the graveyard. Do I have any sitting around here? Uh, no, I don't. Let's pretend that Jinkataxis likes the graveyard, okay? So, uh, Jinkataxis dies. He goes, and you have the option to put him in the command zone or in the general zone, and you decide to put him in the graveyard. So he goes into the graveyard. Now he is there forever, okay? He's in the graveyard forever until he either gets exiled by, let's say, uh, I don't know, uh, Rest in Peace or something like that, or a Nihil Spellbomb, okay? And if he's exiled from the graveyard, then you have the choice. Actually, he goes right back into the command zone. You don't have a choice, but he goes into the command zone, okay? Um, now let's just say you have a Jinka Taxis that's on board, and he gets bounced to your hand. So he goes back to your hand, okay? Let's say Jinkataxis has two counters on him in the command zone, however he's in your hand. And if you decide to cast him from your hand, you can cast him without any of the counters. The only time the counters are relevant are when the Jinkataxis is in your command zone. Alright, so remember that it's really, really important. Okay, uh, let's see. What more other rules? Game rules. Here we go. Um, we are going to start at 40 life. Alright, so no more 20 life. In Commander, we start at 40 life, okay? That's pretty good for us, so we get 20 extra life. Uh, in multiplayer games, each player beyond the first person to play draws a card, all right? So only the first player does not draw um, the eighth card, right? Everyone else beyond the first player draws an eighth card. Uh, mulligan rules. There are two kinds of mulligans in Commander, and we'll go over them real quick. Um, one of them is a full mulligan, and the other one is a half mulligan. It's a half Paris mulligan. So it um, depends on who you're playing with or what league you're playing in, but they can be different. Um, let's just say we start with a full pe full mulligan. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? So a full mulligan, let's say we're going to draw our cards here. Let's flip them over. This is from this is from my Cranko deck. Stick this out here. Got some mountains. Let's see. Got a Scalding Tarn, okay? So I, I think this hand is actually pretty good, um, but... Just for the sake of it, let's say this hand is not very good, and we want to mulligan, all right? So if this is a full full mulligan rule system, then what you have to do is you have to scoop up the whole hand, okay? You're going to put it next to your deck. It does not get shuffled in, all right? And you're going to get another seven, all right? In EDH, we get one free mulligan. Three, four, five, six, and seven, all right? And then we can look at these cards and see if we do like them, all right? This hand is probably worse, but we'll keep it, okay? Um, now, if we did decide to mulligan again, we would have to go down to six, okay? And if we mulliganed again, we would put these aside, and then eventually we would shuffle everything back into our deck. All right, now, if we're playing with a half Paris system, what we're going to do is we're going to pull out seven cards, three, four, five, six, and seven, and we'll take a look at those. And now, this is a, a mulligan more for uh, the combo player, okay? So if there are cards in this hand that I do not like, I can pull them out, and we can switch them uh, for something that's on the top of the deck. So right now, let's see, what do I not like? Uh, Vicious Shadows is a little slow, so we'll pull him out. And we'll probably pull out a Hell Rider too. And um, I got no artifacts, so I don't really need my Goblin Welder. All right, so we got four lands, okay? And let's take another three cards off the top. One, two, three. All right, so that is my opening hand now. We have five lands a goblin, and a final fortune. Okay, so this is how uh, the pa half Paris mulligan rule works. All right, um, that's the mulligan system. Let's get down to some general damage. Uh, in EDH, Commander, you can win the game either by taking your opponent from 40 life to zero, or 
you can hit them for 21 points of damage. It's 21 points of damage with your general. So we have, uh, for example, a Mimeoplasm. Now, Mimeoplasm is a combo general that hits for 21 points of damage in one turn. Um, so he is pretty good if you're looking to win with general damage. Now, how this works is uh, if you can do 21 points of damage with your general alone, the opponent will die. It doesn't matter what life total they're at, if they're at a million life, two million. If they take 21 points of general damage from a single general, they lose the game. Okay? So, for example, um, they get hit for 20 points with a Mimeoplasm and then another 4 points with Kamal. They are not dead. Okay? They must take 21 from the Mimeoplasm himself. All right? Now, what happens if my commander is threatened by another opponent? Okay? And they hit my opponent to finish him off. They hit another opponent to finish him off for 21 points of damage. Does he die? Yes, he does, because it is from one commander. It doesn't matter who owns or who is controlling the commander. Just any one commander does 21 points of damage to a single opponent. That opponent is dead. Okay? That's how the general damage works. All right. Next, uh, let's go to the ban list. And hopefully you'll see a list of banned cards scrolling down the screen right now. Um, and you can also find those at Wizards of the Coast and some other EDH websites. You can find it at my website as well, thecommandzone.com, uh, for an updated ban list. Um, so basically, that's really it. You've seen it now. That is the ban list. And we'll get down um, uh, to one more thing I forgot. Um, this is a small thing. Um, it's just kind of a technical rule. Um, there are cards like Bosium Strip in the format, which are legal in the format. Um, Bosium Strip uses the order of cards in your graveyard. Um, as part of its uh, rules text. So therefore, all the cards in your graveyard cannot have uh, a switched order, okay? So as the cards go into your graveyard, they must stay in the same order. You cannot switch them around, right, like this, or whatever, because there are cards like Bozium Strip which use um, cards in the graveyard for its rules text or in its rules text, all right? So make sure you don't do that. Do not let your opponents uh, shift around their graveyards because it may, have, uh, may change the outcome of some games. Okay. Um, that's really about it. Um, there are some tips um, if you are do, if you are looking to play in a league. Okay, and if you are looking to play in a league, you can definitely come to my website, thecommandzone.com. Um, send me an email. I will help you set up a league at your local store or whatever in your city or whatever it is. We'll help you get all that kind of stuff uh, set up um, for free. It's all done for free. We'll do it. We'll help you out. Okay, we'll get you set up with everything. Um, now, why this is important? Um, league is very cool because. You can add social interaction to the game by creating achievements for players to reward their just social, you know, just social interactions to um, reward that kind of play style. Instead of, okay, I'm just going to combo out on turn four and I'm going to kill everyone at the same time. That's not really fun when you sit down to a match with four or five other guys. So, you still have the option to combo out, right? But what we're doing now is we're adding um, achievements uh, to help just fuel the fire and make games more interesting. Um, so what this means is pretty much like the old rules of EDH is you kill a guy, you get four points. Whoever has the most points at the end of the at the end of the season wins. Okay. However, we're doing it a little differently now. You still get the five points or three points or whatever it is um, for killing an opponent. However, you will have the option of getting one point or two points um, by like unlocking achievements that are either not too difficult or like they range from not difficult to extremely difficult. Okay. So maybe you get one point for having ten or more tokens on board. Or you get two points for having 20 or, 20 or more basic lands on board. All right? Maybe you get a point um, by killing someone by uh, milling them out. Okay? Or maybe you get two points by killing an opponent with their own general. Okay? So you steal their general and you kill them with it. You get maybe two or three points. You get three points for casting a grizzly bear. Something like that. Or one point for casting a grizzly bear, right? Because the grizzly bear is going to take up a slot that uh, would probably be for a better card. Okay, um, so if you are looking to uh, start a league or if you're just looking to build a deck or whatever or get into the format, um, please contact me. Um, I'll help you build any deck you want. Um, I do have a lot of cards. I can always put up a, uh, a deck list if you're looking for that. Um, so thank you very much. This is John from thecommandzone.com. we got lots of deck techs online. Check them out, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.